Um, it's amazing. Yeah, it's incredible. Space flown it? mementos are yeah. just so cool. It's crazy. Um, you also ended up being, if I'm correct, in the final hundred applicants for the now cancelled Mars One mission. What was it like getting that far? What were they expecting you to do? You know, it's such a funny period of my career, and and I look back on it with uh, I'm sort of you know in between how I feel about it. Very hot, very cold. Yeah. Um, you know, never was this ever a an engineering mission, right? Like this this was a, an organization with a single media premise. Right? Sure. They were banking on the fact that the spectacle of sending humans to Mars was worth the capital investment, right? Yeah. It, was, it was like straight up ROI for what could this be? And, you know, to be fair to them, you know, you look at something like the Olympics, you look at something like, you know, Shackleton's expedition to Mount Everest, like that was funded by documentary rights. So there's precedent for this kind of thinking. And to me, what was so attractive is that, you know, it, it resonated with me that I do believe this is more of an economic challenge than an engineering challenge, yeah. sending humans to Mars. I yeah. believe that that's where we're at. We need the national will. We need the capital. So uh, to me, I was very excited to be a part of that conversation Never once did I think, oh, my flight is leaving, you know, in the next few years. I knew that this was a, a non-zero chance, but like Lloyd okay. Christmas, you know, and Dumb and Dumber, it's like yeah, you're yeah. saying there's a there's chance, chance yeah. <laughs> right? It's like that endless optimism that's carried me pretty far in my career. So there wasn't a lot of meat on the bones with the Mars One mission. You know, I, I can't point to anything that made me think, yeah, this is, they, they've got this all figured out. Yeah. But at the same time, I do think it was helpful in removing a little bit of the giggle factor in yeah. the global conversation of human settlement of another planet. It made it that much more real it did. for people to yeah. know we're alive in a time where that's even feasible. Well, I, I'm personally, I'm, I'm sure Katz is the same, but I'm, I'm fascinated by, by a potential mission to Mars. Um, yeah. And I've heard you in an interview say that your passion is space settlement and You've been, as we said in the beginning, you've been part of a research team that spent time on at the Mars Desert Research Station. I mean, you partly answered it anyway, but how close are we really to settling on Mars? Is it just I mean, money? We're very far. We're very, we're very far, far okay. from, from the practicalities of, you know, truly a self-sustaining yeah. settlement off Earth. But I think what's fascinating about it, it to me is, you know, you think about such a different type of mission from a shuttle flight or even a longer duration, six month stay on the ISS. Right. Yeah. And you think, OK, if the right candidate profiles um, for a high octane orbit of the Earth or stay on the space station, we're sort of these steely eyed test pilots. Who's the ideal candidate to make a home out of another planet? Right. Yeah. It sort of flips the entire model on its head. And as space flight evolves, I do think crew needs and candidate profiles will evolve too. And that's where analog situations can be really helpful in factoring in some of those softer interpersonal dynamics. And, and did they talk much about the fitness of of the of the astronauts as well? Because obviously you would on a different you'd be you would be in a different planetary environment, obviously less slightly less gravity. Is fitness yeah. a big part of that? everything medical is yeah. going to be a part of that, right? I mean, you, you just can't possibly get further from help if you need it in yeah. that environment. <laughs> and in our simulation, you know, we, we obviously were here on Earth, um, but we did have a commitment together as a crew to completely, you know, commit to as high fidelity of a simulation as we could. And that yeah. included uh, knowing that we would not break simulation except for the event of loss of limb, life, or consciousness, wow. right? We weren't going to break the sim um, in order to, to contact emergency services. We did have trauma surgeons. Folks were cross-trained in small sutures and in, in medical first aid. Um, and so we felt very confident about that. But yes, on, on Mars, you know, this is an environment that is... It, not compatible with human life and so everything in that environment is hostile and deadly yeah yeah 